Welcome to the Samurai 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you Barrero Kenkyu Suru better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this, while you were chasing cat girls in Limsa Lominsa, I studied the blade. To this. Today I wanted to play Samurai with a functional katana controller. <laughs> so, there's this thing. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openings and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heaven's Word Skills, Level 70 for Storm Blood Stuff, Level 80 for Shadowbringers, and Level 90 for Endwalker's Toolkit. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still, and already has changed Samurai. Read the description, there are big changes coming. I however still at least want to release this video for historical purposes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Samurai is a melee DPS job all about doing big damage. You're fast too, but tends to feel slower than ninja or monk. But that doesn't mean Samurai isn't busy. A resource you generate quickly and must constantly spend, buffs to keep track of, and big attacks to launch out. It sounds like a lot more than it is though. It flows really well. To the point that Samurai rotations tend to be perfectly circular, leading to one of the more extreme, simple to learn, hard to master scenarios. You lack almost any way to support your allies, instead being the one everyone looks to buff instead, so you can put out as much damage as you can. Your big EI Jutsu attacks are both built up and build up. Your combos let you use EI Jutsu, and using EI Jutsu lets you use other big attacks, and it requires very little dancing around the enemy, letting you stand still much of your time. Which you'll need to for a few cast times. To obtain the Samurai job, you must complete your level 10 class quest and be level 50. That's it! Aside from owning the Stormblood expansion, that is. Have these requirements met, head to the old Aetherite Plaza, and it will be right outside. We have an entire set of role actions to deal with. You want these on your hotbars, for sure. I won't be going over them here, though. In the corner or in the description is a video on these skills. I recommend it because they are a real extension of your kit. Let's get into the finer details of each skill, and Samurai starts at level 50, so we have a bunch of buttons to start out. Level 1, Hakaze. Level 4, Jinpu. And level 30, Gekko. This is our first basic combo. You should hit your buttons in a combo in a row, never skipping ahead. The buttons light up when you have a combo, follow the lights. The light can mean other stuff too though, so don't get lost in the shuffle. This combo has a couple different things to go over. Hakaze is a basic hit with 180 potency of damage to a target. This leads into Jinpu, a 280 potency hit to a target. There is also an extra effect here, granting you Fugetsu for 40 seconds. Fugetsu is a damage buff, increasing all damage you deal by 10%. This is important to maintain at all times. Then finally is Gekko, which has two effects. This has a rear positional, which means it does extra damage when attacking an enemy from behind. The rear is denoted on screen by the picture shown now. The entire empty section behind the enemy. The attack does 320 potency, 370 with the positional, with or without the positional, you will gain Getsu, the moon icon on what is called the Sen Gauge. Getsu is one of three Sen, which we will use later. We want these icons, remember that. Level 1, Hakaze. Level 18, Shifu. And level 40, Kasha. Once again, this is a full combo, 
Both combos are starting with Hakaze, and you can continue onto either pathway after Hakaze. Shifu, meanwhile, is the partner to Jinpu. Shifu does 280 potency just the same, but grants us the buff of Fuka. Fuka reduces cast time, recast time, and auto attack delay by 10%. This is the buff that makes Samurai a faster job as a base. Like Fugetsu, you want to keep this buff up at all times. 10% faster means 10% more attacks. Finally, we have Kasha. This is the partner to Gekko, doing 320 potency or 370 with the positional. However, Kasha is a flank positional. Flanks are the sides of the enemy, and once again, shown on screen with the picture's red portions. Secondly, it gives the Sen of Ka, the flower of our Sen gauge. And again, we'll cover what those Sen are for in a bit. Level 1, Hakaze, and level 50, Yukikaze. For the third time, the combo starts with Hakaze, branching off three ways. Yukikaze is the final branch doing 280 potency of damage to a target. It has no buffs, but also grants Setsu, the snow icon on the Sen gauge. This combo has the benefit of only being two hits long for a Sen. This is actually significant for mastering the toolkit of Samurai. We'll see why in a bit. Level 26, Fuga. Level 35, Mangetsu. And level 45, Oka. This is our AoE toolkit, meaning Area of Effect. This is the skill set we want to pull out when there are three or more enemies to fight. One or two, stick with the single target attacks we already went over. Fuga is a basic hit. It does an 8 yom konal AoE in the direction of a current target. And that's a pretty big cone. It does 90 potency to all enemies hit. Then it combos into Mangetsu and Oka. Mangetsu and Oka are both counterparts to Gekko and Kasha, but also Jinpu and Shifu. Mangetsu will grant you the 40 second 10% damage buff of Fugetsu and grant you the Sen of Getsu. Oka grants Fuka the 10% speed boost for 40 seconds and the Sen of Ka. Both attacks do 110 potency of damage to all targets hit. Because of how these work, you want to alternate the combos. This keeps your buffs refreshed at all times and gets you to have both Sen. Also, there is no AoE way to obtain Setsu. Not that we would want to, we only want two out of three Sen with our AoE. This will make sense in a bit. Level 50, Meikyo Shisui. This is another big way for us to generate Sen, but also makes gaining our buffs easier. On a 55 second cooldown, this removes all combo requirements from single target and AoE moves. You can skip right to Yukikaze, Gekko, Kasha, Oka, and Mangetsu, and get all normal benefits, full potency, and all buffs. But this comes with a further benefit for single target. Normally, Gekko and Kasha are not going to give us our buffs. Using Gekko and Kasha under Meikyo Shisui will now grant us Fugetsu and Fuka, respectively. In openers, this massively speeds up our buffing and ability to get into our full damage. We don't need to do the full combos just for the buffs. We'll see this in action a lot as we level. And really, that's all you ever use it for. You'll do it mid-combat too, but you'll still only be using those five skills. It either does not affect any of the other skills in your toolkit, or otherwise is a bad choice to use it on those. If it doesn't give you a Sen, it's not worth using during Meikyo. Though as I said, other skills aren't affected by Meikyo, and we'll be using those mid Meikyo. But first we need to talk about them. Level 30, 40, and 50, Ei Jutsu. Ei Jutsu changes based on how many different Sen you have, 1, 2, or 3. At level 30 we only have access to 1 Sen, 40 we have 2 Sen, and at 50 we have all 3 Sen available. The Ei Jutsu button will change as you obtain Sen in the Sen Gauge. It does not matter which Sen they are, all that matters is the count. So let's talk about the actual skills Ei Jutsu becomes. And keep in mind, all Ei Jutsu have a cast time of 1.8 seconds. Level 30, Higginbana. Our strongest single target attack for a very long time is Higginbana. It does a 200 potency hit to a target and applies a debuff to said target. This is a dot, or damage over time. It does 30 potency of damage for a whole minute, 60 seconds. Dots work on a server tick, meaning it does damage every 3 seconds. With a 60 second timer, that's 20 hits, or 600 potency dot. 
In total, that's 800 potency for the full duration. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It means you only need to worry about it every minute. On the bad side, if you want to use this, you need to consider if the enemy will last long enough. For context, one of the other EI Jutsu is 660 potency with no wait time. So if an enemy is going to die in about 30 seconds, you want that other EI Jutsu. Really though, this is mostly just for boss fights. Normal enemies almost exclusively do not last long enough for Higginbana to be worth it over your AoE. And those bosses will get two, maybe three uses of Higginbana before it dies. Refresh the dot when it falls off, and you think the enemy will live long enough. If it won't live long enough, skip it. Level 40, Tenka Goken. This is why our AoE does not have a way to get Setsu, only Getsu and Ka. This requires two Sen of any type, and is an AoE. It does 280 potency to all enemies in an 8 Yom cone towards the target, or essentially the same size as Fuga. If you are fighting three or more enemies, there's no reason to not use Tenka Goken. Yet enemies won't survive for Higginbana's duration, and it's stronger on three enemies than our three Sen EI Jutsu. Really simple to explain, and really worth that high damage. Just to reiterate though, alternate your AoE attacks to get two Sen, then throw out Tenka Goken. Level 50, Midare Setsugeka. Requiring all three of your Sen, this is the one that does 660 potency of damage instantly to a target. That is a really strong kit. No contest it should be used ASAP. If you're fighting a group, you're using Tenka Goken anyway. One to two enemies, you're going to do a massive chunk of damage instantly. If you already have Higginbana up on a target like a boss, keep throwing out Midaris for the duration. But again, it's a balancing act. If the enemy won't last long, you just skip Higginbana to go right to Midare. But if you just started the boss, or it's not even halfway dead, throw on Higginbana, then get to Midare. But this overall is the main loop of Samurai. Use your combos to generate Sen, then spend those Sen on EI Jutsu. Tenka Goken for AoE, Higginbana for bosses, and Midare for everything else, or when Higginbana is already applied. A lot more gets added onto this coil loop, don't misunderstand, but it is key you get used to using EI Jutsu and the cast times involved. It's not a lot of casting, but 1.8 seconds is essentially a full cast time in this early phase. It's a loop that will also work as a timer for us in later levels as well, so getting a feel for it is good. And importantly, if you're mid-combo for whatever reason, you can EI Jutsu without it breaking the combo. This will likely come into play with the craziness of AoE. Tenka Goken will not break the combo if you use Fuga first. Place your combos in good positions around your bar and you can easily keep track of your Sen without the gauge. But before we build any opener, we have a few more skills to go over. Level 6, Third Eye. On a very short 15 second cooldown, you are given a shield buff for an impressive... 3 seconds. And it reduces the damage of a singular attack before disappearing, reducing the damage by 10%. This sounds absolutely terrible, but it's due to a lack of proper framing. And an upgrade in two levels. To skip ahead those two levels, it gives us 10 Kenki, another gauge we're gonna have to manage, for every time you block an attack. So potentially, that's 10 Kenki every 15 seconds, which when spent is worth at least 108 potency. As a result, it becomes way more useful to use this as much as you can. Get used to using it now even at lower levels. But even when it doesn't actively fuel your damage output, it is a defensive boost for solo content and party content. A little bit of extra survival for the job that has some very difficult job quests. So it is good to start getting used to the idea of using Third Eye anytime you can. As for using it in parties, it's a bit easy to make sure it's a significant defensive help. You still have to time it, but in bosses you have consistent spots for using Third Eye. If a boss is doing some form of raid-wide attack, or is targeting you for a mechanic, or other potential consistent damaging attacks, you can third eye to defend against it. Later on, you can almost always tell when a boss is using one of these with the cast bar. Remember the name of an attack, and you can always mitigate it. Overall, it's a simple skill with simple usage, but it can be a much bigger benefit than what the skill description makes it out to be. It's never going to give you a big help against a group, 
but one-on-one -on -one in bosses, you'll be reducing a lot more damage and gaining a lot of Kenki. Just be wary of the many off-globals we're getting, taking up a lot of space for using Third Eye. Level 15, NP. A button we want to avoid at all costs. It does a measly 100 potency of damage to a target. You can use this from up to 20 yalms away, making this a ranged attack option. Or just stand in melee range. Many players see they have a ranged option and feel like the game will lead them to use it, when 9 out of 10 times they had no need to use their ranged attack. They could have stayed on the boss and continued their combos. In the cases where you absolutely must run away from the enemy or boss, and it's not just for half a second, you can use NP for a bit of extra damage. Just make sure you're actually needing to move away from the boss. An AoE on you is not cause to walk away. An AoE on an ally is not cause to walk away. A boss-scented AoE that is bigger than max melee range is cause to walk away. At the end of the cast bar. Only the end of it matters, you can stand in it for the entire rest of the time and be fine. And with how big of hits Samurai does, you want to be pushing as many big hits as you can. On the plus side, NP will not break your combos, and if nothing else, after level 52, you can do it as filler in trash pulls. If for whatever reason you're not in range for Fuga and AoE combos, which you always should be anyway, you can NP to build free Kenki. But let's start talking about openers. Our toolkit at 50 is extremely basic, to the point that it's mostly just going through the motions of your rotation. We're gonna make you Shisui to get a free EI Jutsu and then just keep going. Pre-pull, make your Shisui. Ideally 9 seconds before pull. Gekko, Kasha, Yukikaze, Midare Setsugeka, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Higginbana, Hakaze, Jinpu, Gekko, Hakaze, Shifu, Kasha, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Midare Setsugeka. As I said, it's literally just going through your basic rotation. The only question to answer here is why we start with Madare and use Higginbana second. The big reasons come with level 90 and how the opener works up to that point, but even now we can abuse the fact that Meikyo Shisui applies Fugetsu and Fuka for us. When we use Meikyo before we start the fight, the Gekko and Kasha we then do apply both buffs. And these buffs are extremely important with keeping our damage up. And since we're already at 2 out of 3 sen from applying our buffs, we go into Yukikaze just to get the third and use Midare. After this, we can immediately push to apply Higginbana with the normal Yukikaze combo. This is where that comes in, by the way, that I mentioned earlier. The fact that it only is 2 hits is better than 3 hits from Gekko or Kasha. From there, we'll just keep hitting all 3 of our combos one after another to keep getting Midare casts, and to keep our buffs on. Every minute we can make Yoshi 3 for another Midare, and also signaling we are at the point of reapplying Higginbana. And that really is all there is to it at this point. The only other note I could say is you may also wish to True North in addition to Makyo, or you'll likely miss out on at least the Gecko positional. Otherwise we should move on to the rest of the Samurai Toolkit. We won't bother doing the karaoke openers until level 70, so I'll explain what that means there. For now, heaven's word time. Things get a bit more interesting going forward. Level 52, Kenki Mastery. We now have a sword gauge, the Kenki Gauge. Certain attacks will now grant you Kenki in multiples of 5, with a max of 100 for the gauge. Gekko, Kasha, Enpi, Oka, and Mangetsu will give us 5 Kenki each. Yukikaze will grant us 10 Kenki for using it, and Third Eye will give us 10 Kenki if the shield is hit and reduces an attack's damage. Without third eye gains, it takes an entire three combos to get 20 Kenki in single target, and four combos in AoE. Now you might think you could do the Yukikaze combo twice, but that means you'd now lose the Sen without spending it first. So as a result, Gekko, Kasha, and Yukikaze combo leads to 20 Kenki. 20 being the amount needed for the Kenki spender we get at this level. Level 52, Hisatsu Kaiten. I will not be using the Hisatsu part of skill names when discussing them. Pay more attention to the ending part, as there are seven different Hisatsu skills. Truncating the words to just the ending part will hopefully reduce any confusion. And big warning here, 
Kaiten is being removed from the game, which may or may not massively affect how Samurai plays going forward. Again, please read the description. If we are lucky, the only changes that are being made are potency numbers and not needing to hit Kaiten for every EI Jutsu. If that is the case, this entire guide remains relevant aside from any mention of Kaiten and potency numbers. Anyway, Kaiten essentially has no cooldown despite being an OG CD ability. It costs 20 Kenki to use and lasts 10 seconds. But that 10 second timer almost means nothing except for some very specific cases. It won't apply because Kaiten will buff the next weapon skill's damage by 50%, and only that singular next weapon skill. The buff will then disappear. Because of this effect, we will only ever use this on EI Jutsu and our level 90 skill. All other skills will not be given Kaiten boosts. We have so little generation at this point, we need to make the most out of it. The most being 50% boosts on the already huge EI Jutsu skills. A Kaiten Higanbana is 300 potency, 45 potency dot, totaling at 1200 potency. A Kaiten Tenkagoken is a 420 potency AoE on all targets hit. A Kaiten Midari Setsugeka is a 990 potency hit on a target. In the worst case, Kaiten on Midare, that's still a 330 potency increase. That is still extremely significant. These remain some of our biggest single hits up to level cap, so it's no question on what to Kaiten. In AoE, buff up Tenkagoken. In single target, focus on buffing your Higanbana before sending it all to Madare. Level 54, Hisatsu Gyoten, and level 56, Hisatsu Yaten. I'm putting these together due to their similarities and differences. They're essentially partners, both costing 10 Kenki to use and do 100 potency of damage. They both are movement tools, one for getting in, the other for getting out. Gyoten has a range of 20 yarms and is a gap closer. You rush at the target and immediately get into melee range. This makes for a good engagement tool when the tank has no breaks and is rushing ahead even by normal standards. The biggest loss of damage you can have is not being in melee range, so immediately getting in range as a battle starts is an improvement. Yaten is the opposite. It has a 5 yom melee range and launches you away from the enemy by 10 yoms. This makes escaping from a large AoE around a boss much easier and safer, if a bit of a niche skill since you could just walk. The better you get, the more you tend to greed your attacks and get into dangerous positions. This can save you from that greed. On top of this though, you are granted Enhanced NP. Enhanced NP boosts NP's power to a much higher 260 potency of damage. NP, 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 NP. If you were in a situation where you've actually had reason to use Yaten, there are almost no situations where you wouldn't also use this enhanced NP. Treat this like a combo, even if one of the buttons is OGCD and the other is GCD. The fact that you weave Yaten in means you lose almost no uptime either. Ultimately though, use these specifically for their movement capabilities. Mastery and proper usage of these skills can lead into a lot of extra damage, but it's a bit of a journey to get there. Level 60, Meditate. This is one of two skills locked behind a job quest. You really need to go get your job quests done. These two skills are very nice to have, besides the fact that a full toolkit is just better. On a 60 second cooldown, Meditate forces you to stand still and cancels auto attack upon starting. If you move at all when starting Meditate or at any point during the meditation animation, the skill will end. You must stay still. No attacking, anything. For up to 15 seconds, you can sit there and generate Kenki. It only works mid-combat and gives you 10 Kenki every 3 seconds for a total of 50 Kenki. So, you can only use this in combat, but you can't move during it where the skill ends. That includes attacking. That sounds like a contradictory skill, doesn't it? But it's not. This is for when there is downtime. By now you have seen plenty of bosses who will disappear from the arena and potentially even do an ultimate attack when they do, which they are immune to damage for. While they are gone or unable to be damaged, use Meditate. This can give you a huge lead on your Kenki management up to two extra Kaitens, maybe a Gyoten or a Yaten, and all the other options we're gonna get as we level. 
put this out of the way so you don't use it by accident, but some way you can hit it the moment you get to a downtime part of a fight. This was a very kanky focused expansion, but due to how we get so little kanky, we can't do much with it. There's so little we can do with it in our opening, I'm not gonna walk through it. Oni explained the addition, the only addition being Kaiten. The Gekko, Kasha, Yukikaze all at the start will give us 20 Kenki, meaning we can Kaiten, but we're not going to buff the Midari Setsugeka, but the Higginbana we do soon after. Then, all the way at the end, we have gone through yet another full combo. Higginbana is already up, so we buff the Midari, and then that's it. That's the only addition for an opener. Kaiten every EI Jutsu you can through the full rotation and prioritize Higginbana. Then when you get back to Yamekyo, do it all over again. Let's just move into Stormblood skills. That'll be a much bigger change to our opener and rotation, and fitting since that's the expansion that Samurai came from. Level 62, Kenki Mastery 2. This is the big one. We're going from starving for Kenki to drowning in it. All main weapon skills that are not EI Jutsu have been given and added 5 Kenki. So Gekko, Kasha, NP, Mangetsu, and Oka are all now worth 10 Kenki. Yukikaze is now worth 15. Third Eye is still 10. Fuga, Hakaze, Jinpu, and Shifu are all now worth 5. What before was a full 3 combos and 3 Sen being worth 20 Kenki is now 60 Kenki. 20 Kenki for each combo string. AoE is still only 15 per combo, but we'll hit 20 on the second Fuga. This is going to quickly lead you to capping your Kenki without actively trying to spend it. Every single EI Jutsu you use from this point forward is going to be buffed by Kaiten, all of them, but that's still not enough to counteract how much Kenki we will be getting. So we got a skill in addition to this buff. Level 62, Hisatsu Shinten. Shinten is your Kenki dump. If you are getting high on your Kenki gauge, Shinten dispense some of it. It costs 25 Kenki and deals 270 potency of damage to a target. With how much Kenki we're getting now, you will be hitting Shinten fairly often. Just be careful you don't overspend and not have enough for Kaiten on your next EI Jutsu. If you see you're at 50 gauge or higher, you're pretty safe to use a Shinten. Weave it in whenever you can for extra damage and not wasting any gauge. Level 64, Hisatsu Q10. This is the AoE version of Shinten. Q10 is a 5 Yom AoE around yourself, doing 110 potency of damage to all enemies around you, costing 25 Kenki. This still follows the same rule your AoE has followed since we started. Three or more enemies use AoE. One or two enemies, Shinten is the better option. You aren't going to be as flooded with Kenki in your AoE rotation, but you will still get some chances to use Q10, especially with some of the later skills. Level 68, Hagakure. This is the hardest skill of Samurai to use and justify, but ends up being the most important skill in the toolkit for masters of the job. I want to go into this before talking about the skill itself, just because of how important a stepping stone it is if you want to go beyond just a beginner of the job. Samurai have a near perfect 60 second loop they can follow for maximizing their damage. This loop is worth a lot more damage and makes the job feel much more smoother to play than you might expect. Writing the line between a skill everyone should learn and min-maxing. Proper usage of Hagakure will ensure you perfectly loop your rotation, assuming no downtime in fights. Again, this loop has many benefits for comfort, damage, and aligning yourself with party-wide buffs. You might not be able to buff your team, but they definitely are buffing you. How this works is by doing an extra combo or two than you need, then using Hagakure to realign yourself. I'm only giving a surface level mention of this technique, but it is worth looking into deeper than what I say here. So let's see how Hagakure achieves this perfect loop. With no real cooldown, this instantly turns all currently accumulated Sen into 10 Kenki each. If you have 1, 2, or 3 Sen, this becomes 10, 20, or 30 Kenki. This seems pretty bad, but it's a specific utility kind of skill, not something we want to be using as we can, just like every other skill. Hagakure is a reset button for your Sen. Consider the following situation. You just finished a boss as you hit Yukikaze. You are now moving into the next pack of trash mobs of the dungeon, with Midare Setsugeka ready to go. 
Midare is a single target skill, but the tank is pulling multiple packs of enemies. There's six, seven, eight, or maybe even more enemies depending on the pool. Instead of using that Midare, you can use a Fuga, get some Kanki, and do 540 or more potency of damage while you convert that 3 Sen into Kanki. That 3 Sen is 30 Kanki or Q10 plus 5 extra Kanki. Q10 is 110 potency per enemy, so even on that group of 6 enemies, it's now 650 potency and spread across 6 enemies instead of a Madare on one enemy. In essence, you're trading one big hit on a single enemy for nearly the same damage or even more spread across an entire group while putting you closer to tank a Goken sooner than later. Without Hagakure, you actively just have to use that Midari on something just to be able to use Tanka Goken again. With Hagakure, that's no longer an issue you need to solve. The entire group of enemies is a danger in trash pools, so wasting time on Midare, no matter how strong it is, is typically less useful than taking down the entire group faster. This idea works in reverse too, but is much less effective in that way. If you have one or two sen when going into a boss, this could be awkward for doing an opener. Hog a curry before starting the fight, and then you can start your opener from the start with no hitch in the works. And while being ahead in Kanki too. Again, that's less good of a use than the AoE version, and may even just be outright DPS negative. No, the real use of Hog a curry for single target is ensuring the perfect loop in lengthy boss fights. To do the perfect loop, we'll be accounting for our skill speed and GCD tier. You will need two, three, or four extra attacks in order to hit 60 seconds of rotation time typically, starting from your first attack. If we need two GCDs to get the loop going, that's a Hakaze and a Yukikaze. So at some point in your rotation, you will intentionally use a Yukikaze combo, then immediately use Hagakure to convert the Sen into Kenki. This lines you up for doing your opener again at 60 seconds, perfectly aligning yourself with raid buffing windows and your cooldowns coming off of cooldown. Again, this is a pretty surface level go over. There's much more to it and I'd say it's worth learning. For now, just try and understand that surface level if you're struggling to understand it. Otherwise, this is why Hagakure is so useful and so important. Level 68, Iki Shoten. On a lengthy two minute cooldown, this increases your Kenki by 50 instantly. Remember how we were already drowning in Kenki? More well, in openers every two minutes, you're going to be drowning even more. Simply put though, it just does what it says on the tin. We make use of that big Kenki bonus in openers, but there's not really anything to explain with it. Make sure you're using it for AoE too. Two whole Q10s or two and a half Kai 10s for Tanka Goken. That's a lot of extra damage and a good reason to keep using it on cooldown. Level 70, Hisatsu Garen. This is our other quest locked skill, and is an extremely good one to have. If you are underwhelmed by Meditate, this one isn't underwhelming. On a 2 minute cooldown, same as Iki Shoten, this does a line AoE in the direction of your target. It is a 10 Yom line, doing 500 potency to the first target and 250 potency to all enemies beyond the first. If you couldn't tell, that is a very strong hit. On as few as 3 enemies, that's already 1000 potency. If you can Garen, especially if it's an AoE situation, hit as many enemies as you can. The issue is the shape, since Fuga and Tinka Goken are cones, which should be fine for getting in Garen. But Oka, Mangetsu, and Q10 are all circles, making you move in. Now you need to also aim a line while doing that back and forth, where the best use could be 90 degrees around the group of enemies from where you're using Fuga. It can be a bit awkward. But you don't need to just use this in AoE either. It's used better in AoE, but you're using this no matter how many targets, at least until level 72. 500 potency for the same cost as a Shinten, which was 270 potency. If you can throw it on a boss, do it. Free damage is nice, and in the case of Trials, what else are you going to use it on? There's only one boss anyway, and the ad phase isn't until later, maybe at least two minutes away. So now we can move into our new opener. We have actual Kenki generation and major skills from Stormblood. We're gonna get even more Kenki from Iki Shoten, spend it on Garen, many more Kaitens and Shintens. Pre pull, Mikyo Shisui, Gekko, Kasha, Iki Shoten, Yukikaze, 
Hisatsu Kaiten, Midare Setsugeka, Hisatsu Garen, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Higinbana, Hakaze, Jinpu, Hisatsu Shinten, Gekko, Hakaze, Hisatsu Shinten, Shifu, Kasha, Hisatsu Shinten, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Midare Setsugeka. There we go, that's much busier than level 1560. From how much Kenki we gain naturally and the 50 from Iki Shoten, every single EI Jutsu will get a Kaiten, as I mentioned earlier. We leave this first Weave Bear for a potion window and probably make sure Iki Shoten is available to use. I've had lag spikes that cause Iki Shoten to delay lighting up without delaying my rotation, so better safe than sorry. Because our GCD speed is faster thanks to Fuka, we try and keep double weaves to a minimum. As such, while we could double weave Garen and Kaiten, we delay it until after the Midare. This doesn't make complete sense if you think about it, but with this I'm also thinking ahead to the level 74 skill we get. Anyway, the rest of the rotation is pretty similar to 50 and 60. The only difference is the addition of three Shintens. The specific placements of these don't need to be in these specific spots. If you have the Kenki, spend it whenever you are comfortable. The Hakaze and Yukikaze at the very end will be enough for the Kaiten to buff the final Madare, so we don't even need to watch out for our Kenki spending. Otherwise, that's the long and short of our additions. A lot of managing our Kenki, and a lot of higher damage just because of how much of it we do. Which leads nicely into the first Karaoke Opener. Karaoke Openers involve me saying the skill names as they get used. Due to the length of these skill names, there may be some major cutting myself off. Just remember, when one skill name begins, that's the exact moment the game registered the action being used. Pre-pull, make Yoshisui. Skipping ahead a bit. Gekko. Kasha, Ikishoten. Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten. Madare Setsugeka, Hisatsu Garen, Akaze. Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Higinbana, Hakaze, Jinpu, Hisatsu Shinten, Gekko, Hisatsu Shinten, Hakaze, Shifu, Kasha, Hisatsu Shinten, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Midare Setsu Gekka. But with that, we have our first real opener gone over and some real practice to put in to get used to. Do so as you journey into Shadowbringers, as things don't slow down. Level 72, Hisatsu Senai. On the same 120 second cooldown as Garen, this does 800 potency of damage to a single target. And I don't just mean the length of time, I mean the literal same cooldown. If you use either Senai or Garen, both will go on cooldown. Garen is the AoE choice, which again, is three or more enemies. Single target, you will use Senai instead. This is a major reason why we wanted to get used to using Garen in single target too, because Senai will now just slot into its place. Level 74, Enhanced EI Jutsu. All this does is reduce the cast time of EI Jutsu to 1.3 seconds. It's simple, but also way more useful than you might expect. Half a second extra leeway for weaving, or moving to dodge and attack sooner. This is also what I was referring to during the level 70 opener. It's nicer than you might expect. Level 76, Tsubame Gaeshi. Technically three skills in one, Tsubame Gaeshi has a 60 second cooldown and uses a buffed up version of the EI Jutsu you just used with no cast time. You must use Tsubame Gaeshi immediately after EI Jutsu, as if it was a combo. This counts as a GCD, but it is not a weapon skill, meaning you cannot use Kaiten on it. This is also because the buffed up version of the skills are the same power as a Kaiten EI Jutsu. Kaeshi Higanvana, for example, is 300 potency and a 45 potency dot for 60 seconds. This is the exact same as Kaiten Higanvana. The same tracks for Kaeshi Goken and Kaeshi Setsugeka. But the irony of using Higginbana for the example is, it's the only Kayashi skill you will never use. Even in situations with two bosses, you will likely never Kayashi Higginbana. It takes almost no effort for you to get the one Sen that you need, and to Kaiten the Higginbana. 
On the flip side, getting two Kaitent Midares is a lot of work. Three Sen takes a lot of time to accrue. As a result, it becomes better to just manually apply Higginbana on both targets. For Goken and Setsugeka, the uses remain as obvious as the EI Jutsu. One or two enemies, pop them with double Midares. If you're in AoE situations, do a double tank a Goken. Tsubame Gaeshi allows you to rush to big hits with no wait time. Well, other than the cooldown. But reopeners will be here before you know it. Level 78, Enhanced Fugetsu and Fuka. Simply buffs for Fugetsu and Fuka from 10% to 13% each. This is a big part of the perfect 60 second rotation I mentioned during Hagakure. 3% doesn't seem like a lot, but it matters big time. Level 80, Shoha. With a recast of 15 seconds, a recast that basically will never come into play, this delivers an attack for 580 potency of damage. The issue is as an addition to our Kanki Gauge. This is Meditation, which remember, we have the skill Meditate. Every 3 seconds of Meditate will grant you one Meditation stack, and Shoha can be used when you have three Meditation stacks. But that's not the main way to use Shoha. Using EI Jutsu will grant you one Meditation stack each use. Tsubame Gaeshi does not grant you a Meditation before you get to counting those. So every three uses of EI Jutsu is an extra 580 potency hit. It gets used more often than your two minute cooldowns, and yet seems to be something players easily forget about. Find a good spot for Shoha on your bars to use it at the next convenient weaving window after a third EI Jutsu. At the very least, we'll be getting one use in our openers. And remember, any downtime sections of fights where you use Meditate, you're getting another Shoha. Make sure it gets used before your next EI Jutsu so you don't overcap on your Meditation stacks. But speaking of openers, let's plug these into our new opener. It's faster due to the Fuka buff and has both Tsubame Gaeshi and Shoha slotted in. We're using Tsubame Gaeshi on the first Midari just to get it on cooldown. Then at the end is Shoha, since the second Midari is the third EI Jutsu. But that's all there is to add. That simple of slotting things in. Otherwise, it's the same opener. And I've been going back and forth on it for a while, but I don't think it's worth going over in a karaoke opener either. There is a Shoha at the end, but I don't think it's worth the full karaoke opener. So let's quickly move on from this part to get into the biggest change in our openers for Endwalker. Level 82, Shoha 2. Shoha 2 is the most awkwardly named AoE version of other attacks. Why isn't Sinai just Garen 2? Anyway, Shoha 2 is an AoE version of Shoha. 200 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of yourself. Again, same AoE rules apply. 3 or more enemies, the AoE version is better than single target one. Level 84, Enhanced Tsubame Gaeshi. This upgrades Tsubame Gaeshi into a skill with charges. The moment you use a charge, the cooldown will begin even if you already have a second stored charge. In total, this is now a 2 minute cooldown, but still only 60 seconds per charge. Otherwise, that's kinda all there is to it. You can use two Tsubame Gaeshis back to back, or at least close together. This leads to bigger burst sections, since you can get two Kaeshi Gokens or Kaeshi Setsugekas in short order, and we will aim to do so. Remember, Kaeshi Higginbana is kinda trash. Level 86, Fuga Mastery and Fuko. This is one of the weirder upgrades. Fuga has become Fuko. Fuko is a 100 potency hit in a circle around you, the usual 5 yams. So instead of having to go from cone to circle to cone to circle, you only have to deal with Tenkagoken cones and Garen lines. Oh, and Fuko gives 10 Kenki instead of just 5. Small boost, but nothing life changing. It's good quality of life at the minimum. Level 88, Enhanced Make Yoshisui. Similar to Enhanced Tsubame Gaeshi, Make Yoshisui now has two charges, and while the cooldown is 55 seconds, we're still mostly treating it like a 60 second cooldown. Perfect loop and all that. But this is going to massively speed up openers since we don't need to do the full combos to get more Sen. We can get six Sen without a combo, which is a Midare, a Higginbana, and two thirds of a Sen for the next Midare. Or in AoE situations, three whole Tenka Gokens. Though, will likely involve a pause just because of how hectic AoE can get. But simply, double the usage means faster bursting. Level 90, Enhanced Ikishoten, Oginamakiri, and Kaeshi Namakiri. 
Enhanced Iki Shoten grants you Okinamakiri Ready anytime you use Iki Shoten. This buff lasts for 30 seconds, meaning you have to use it within that time. But you will definitely want to, as this is a combination of Tenka Goken and Midari Setsugeka. It does an 8 yom AoE cone toward the target, doing 900 potency to the first target and 225 potency to all targets after the first. But on top of that, this is a weapon skill, meaning you can buff it by 50%. Use Kai Ten for a 1350 potency hit on the first target, 337 potency on all other enemies hit. But this gets better. Because upon hitting enemies with Ogi Namakiri, it will change form into Kaeshi Namakiri. And just like Tsubame Gaeshi, this is a pre-buffed version of Ogi Namakiri that is also instant cast. This has become your absolutely biggest hit to use. And that's without also adding in on top, a meditation stack. That's right, you're progressing towards Shoha with Ogi Namakiri. The unfortunate part is you can only ever get it from Iki Shoten, so that puts it on essentially a two minute cooldown. So you're still mostly just relying on basic EI Jutsu casts for the Shoha stacks and the damage. If it's not being thrown out for AoE usage, you're putting it in openers and reopeners. So let's talk about how this set of skills affects our opener, and it does affect our opener quite a lot. So let's check it all out. Pre-pull, make Yoshisui. Gecko, Kasha, Iki Shoten, Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Midare Setsugeka, Kaishi Setsugeka, Hisatsu Sanai, Make Yoshisui, Gecko, Hisatsu Kaiten, Higinbana, Kasha, Hisatsu Kaiten, Oginamakiri, Kaeshinamakiri, Shoha, Gecko, Hisatsu Shinten, Hakaze, Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Midari Setsugeka, Kaeshi Setsugeka. So the first change we have is after Arsenai. We double weave and make Yoshisui, but if you have trouble with double weaves, move Senai to between Midari and Kaeshi. But we want to get back into Makyo for another Gecko. This is stronger than Yukikaze, and we don't need to use Hakaze first to get there. We can then get our Higinbana that much faster and stronger. From there we do Akasha to spend one more of the stacks of Makyo, and give us a proper weaving window for extra Kanki and the next Kaiten. This one will buff up Ogi Namakiri. With the dot running we can focus on just doing big hits, so Ogi and Kaeshi. This will also be our third meditation stack, meaning it's time for Shoha. We have one last stack of Makyo so we can Goka again to get the Sen, and give us enough Kanki for a Shinten. Shinten and then our normal Hakaze into Yukikaze will give us enough Kanki for the next Midare Setsugeka. And because we have two stacks of Tsubamagashi, we can Kaeshi Setsugeka to finish it off. Again, remember about the 60 second loop if you can, and be ready for 60 second opener windows. We won't be saving everything for full 2 minute burst reopeners typically. Makyo and Tsubamegayashi can be used every minute. This way you don't accidentally overcap them, and you keep consistent damage higher. But otherwise, let's karaoke one last time. Push out the damage as we learn our favorite Naruto lyrics. Pre-pull, Makyo Shisui. Skipping ahead. Remember, it's 9 seconds before pull, ideally. Gecko. Kasha. Ikishoten. Yukikaze. Hisatsu Kaiten. Hidare Setsu Gekka. Kaeshi Setsu Kisatsu Senai. Mekyo Shisui. Gekko. Hisatsu Kaiten. Higinbana. Kasha. Hisatsu Kaiten. Oginamakiri. Kaeshi Namakiri. Shoha. Gekko. Hisatsu Shinten. Hakaze. Yukikaze, Hisatsu Kaiten, Midari Setsugeka, Kaeshi Setsugeka. And so Samurai has come to an end. Hope this helped you study the blade. May your controllers and keyboards be 1000 times folded Nippon Steel. Thank you for watching this Samurai 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. 
Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Hogs lay waste to your enemies.